Hello everyone, Pastor Ben here. It's Friday. You made it. The weekend's here and even better news, Sunday is here, well, coming soon. And so I'm excited to spend some time with you and I pray that you are too. Um, been kind of a little bit of an exciting week and uh, had a lot of things planned, uh, but a lot of plans were interrupted as a result of snowstorms and things like that. And and at times found myself kind of frustrated, had a list of things that, that I was trying to get done and hoping to get done and didn't work out. And so found myself kind of frustrated and um, at different points, you know, was just, I don't know, just kind of irritated with the way that things were. Uh, you know, at some point, you know, shoveling some snow isn't so bad, but then, you know, after a while, it kind of wears on you. And it was just kind of one of those things that, you know, we did that on what day was that Wednesday and then Thursday it kind of had to do it again. And so it was getting a little old and I found myself a little frustrated. And actually, as I've been studying and preparing for Sunday and where we are going to be is Acts chapter 11, verses 19 through 30 and was, you know, looking at different things, studying different things. And one of the things that struck me that I want to share with you, and I don't want to give too much away as we're going to go into this a little bit deeper on Sunday, but um, I was struck by the fact of the amount of time that had passed between when Saul or Paul, as we're now referring him to referring to him as, um, there was a significant amount of time. As we read through Acts, we kind of lose this time frame that that's there. But in, in studying all of this, uh, and different scholars have some different ideas, but it's roughly about 10 years from when we see uh, Saul and his conversion to now where we are reintroduced to him again. And, and I found that significant. 10 years. Paul is, is in Tarsus for this extended period of time. And... Uh, not much is heard from him. In fact, there is no record of, of what happened with Paul during this time. However, as we are reintroduced to him here in Acts chapter 11, some significant changes have taken place. Um, we get this impression of, of Saul early on, just really, I mean, he was on fire for the Lord. Uh, all of these things that, that God had done in his life, the way that he had so drastically changed his perspective and heart was a turnoff to a lot of people. In fact, they had to get him out of the city because they were there was a group of these Hellenistic Jews that were wanting to kill him. And so they move him out of, of, of Jerusalem and he goes to Tarsus. Roughly 10 years have passed and now we have uh, this, this amazing move of God that's taking place in Antioch which is a whole kind of crazy uh, city anyway, and we'll talk more about that on Sunday. But um, Barnabas is sent there by the church in Jerusalem uh, to see what's going on, to encourage these new believers. Remember, Peter has, has had this vision of the, that the message of Christ isn't just for the Jews, but it's also for the Gentiles. And so this is also taking place here in Antioch, and uh, other believers are sharing the gospel and the good news and people are responding. Barnabas is sent and he's encouraging them, but the Lord obviously speaks to him during this time and he goes looking for Saul, for Paul. And I can't imagine what's taking place, the conversation. Remember, Barnabas was one that, that kind of stood up for Paul for Saul with the Jerusalem, with the church in Jerusalem, where all the other disciples were and had gathered. So, so Barnabas, I think, really had a, a special connection with Paul. And here they're reunited, and, and Barnabas finds him and says, hey, I've got just the, the special thing. Uh, I, I believe it's time. And so, so they're joined together in ministry. And, and I just I was struck by this amount of time, as I'd mentioned. I can't imagine Paul being one of those kind of people that wouldn't be maybe a little frustrated by delay, by, by the Lord kind of pumping the brakes, so to speak. And, and Paul, in these 10 years, is really transformed. 
in these 10 years, as, as Barnabas goes to find him, in the Greek, it says that, that Barnabas wasn't just kind of asking around. He had to go search for him. Paul was in seclusion. Um, and I think that's significant. Paul was not just taking this time, sitting around, twiddling his thumbs. But this was a time of preparation. And he sought the Lord. And I believe that that his character of being one that uh, desired knowledge to grow in knowledge of all of these things, all of all of what he had learned was now being joined together in a different way with this knowledge and this realization of who Christ is. And so I think that's significant. And so while I was frustrated with this week of my plans being interrupted and things happening, you know, I'm reminded this of what happened in Paul's life, of this this time of of being interrupted, this time of 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 things not going in a certain direction, and him allowing God to do the work in his life to sanctify him, uh, to to fully uh, get on board with who Jesus is, the way of Jesus, the heart of Jesus. All of those things were being done in Paul's life, I believe, in those 10 years. And so I was struck by that. And so, you know, this week is my week hasn't gone the way I thought it was. Am I allowing the Lord to work in my life in ways where I would have, where I tend to be frustrated, um, but instead understanding and realizing that the Lord is actually doing something in my heart and life or desires to do those do things in my heart and life if i will just see those as opportunities for him to do those things remember i've talked about this i've said it a lot and i need to remind myself of this thing that nothing is wasted god does not waste opportunities and we see this worked out in in paul's life in this period of time that that we we find him here in tarsus and then coming back to antioch What's the Lord desiring to do in your life? This season that you find yourself in, whatever interruptions have happened or, or are currently taking place, are you submitting these things to the Lord, allowing him to work in your heart and life, change perspective, um, having a, a different heart and attitude towards where you find yourself today? So just want to share some of these things. I'm excited about where we're going to be this Sunday um, this, it's an interesting passage. It almost, it, as you read through it, it just kind of reads through pretty quick. And if we're not, um, taking the time to pump the brakes a little bit and read what's taking place and understand timelines and, and the context of what's happening, some significant things happen in this passage. This is the first time that followers of Jesus, the disciples and, and those that, that gather in the name of Jesus are called Christians. And, and that's significant. We're going to talk more about that during our time together. So excited about this this Sunday. Uh, I'm praying for you. Um, I'm anticipating a great time together. Um, I believe that that the Lord wants to encourage you, maybe challenge you too a little bit. Um, and I think too, it's an opportunity for us to really um, reflect back on this designation of who we are as followers of Jesus. What is a Christian? And uh, even looking at how, how even that term today doesn't mean what it maybe should. So anyway, I don't want to preach my whole sermon here. I, I'm excited for, for this Sunday, and I pray that you are able to join us. Uh, Nine o'clock is our Spanish service. 945 is our Sunday school, and we'd encourage you to, to come and, and get plugged into to our classes. Um, if you are not, you're missing an opportunity. Um, but if you can't join us for, for our Sunday school classes, our English services begin at 1045. Please join us in person or find us online on Facebook, YouTube, and of course, our website at raynaz.com. Praying for you. Um, Looking forward to our time together, and yeah, God bless you today.